what's good y'all support ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out four times wwe went too far and got in serious trouble sometimes the storylines that they try to portray get a little bit too extreme and uh, they may probably get in trouble with the network because at the end of the day the networks do have say on what they want on their on their network so if you're doing a little bit too much they definitely will either fine you or reprimand you but hey bro chill out with that <laughs> we don't want that on our network so let's check this out appreciate all the love and support let's get right into this thing WWE has TV shows every week, they have to try a lot of things to keep fans watching. This has accidentally led to some storylines and moments going too far and yeah. upsetting fans, business partners, and uh -huh. sponsors. In some cases, WWE has lost money because of a storyline, and one incident was so bad, it nearly caused WWE to be shut down. In Damn. 2009, WWE started an unusual storyline where Vince McMahon decided to sell Monday Night Raw. The person he chose to sell the show to was Donald Trump. To make the storyline seem real, WWE actually released a press release saying this. that Trump was now the owner of their flagship show. I think I this, this was a bad idea. WWE's investors saw this and thought it was legit. Within a few hours after the press release, WWE's stock dropped 7%. Damn. To avoid losing even more money, WWE published a second press release admitting that the sale wasn't real and it was just a storyline. Perhaps because of this, Donald sold the show back to Vince McMahon only a week after announcing he had bought it. The storyline was over in a week and has rarely been brought up ever I again. Forgot After about establishing this the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, they was like, hey, wait, 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 what the fuck? You sold the fucking show. Wait a minute. <laughs> Investors like, hey, whoa, 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 hold on. For male wrestlers, WWE decided to create a female version that would debut at WrestleMania 34. However, they decided to name the event after I, the fabulous Moolah. Yeah. The decision to honor Moolah was controversial yeah. due to numerous allegations against her. Some of those included her taking advantage of wrestlers she mentored by demanding a large percentage of their pay and even sexual exploitation. Fans started protesting the decision to yeah, name Yeah, I definitely remember that. <laughs> the match after Moolah, but WWE didn't seem to care. However, the primary sponsor of WrestleMania, Snickers, called the decision unacceptable, and WWE soon renamed the event to just the WrestleMania. Uh -huh. See, that's the thing, bro. When their sponsors say, hey, what the fuck? E no, they gotta do it. Women's Battle Royal. The Muhammad Hassan character was controversial from the moment. I think, yeah, I think However, I there was him. one incident that was the breaking point. On the July 7th, 2005 episode of SmackDown, The Undertaker took on Hassan's manager, Davari. The dead man made quick work of Davari, but Muhammad Hassan had something else planned. Five men in black ski masks and camo oh. pants ran into the ring and attacked Undertaker. While not flat out saying it, the yeah. whole incident gave a terroristic yeah. tone. What pushed this over the edge was the same date this moment aired on. On TV, four real life bombings happened in oh. London earlier that morning. While the segment with Undertaker and Muhammad Hassan was cut from the broadcast in Australia and Europe, it was still shown in other countries. That this, of course, sense. got a lot of backlash, yeah. and UPN, the network broadcasting SmackDown, wouldn't allow the Muhammad Hassan character to appear on their network anymore. Damn. Ultimately, due to public pressure, WWE dropped Hassan altogether, and the character was never seen again after the Undertaker defeated him at the Great American Bash. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing laying. <laughs> pay-per-view. Four words, Pillman's got a gun. Uh, uh, yep. Even if you don't know Pillman's anything gun, about yep. this infamous WWE moment, you probably have a good idea why it was so controversial. Uh -huh. In 1996, WWE wasn't doing so well. To try and turn things around, the company decided to make their shows edgier and more adult. Yep. However, they pushed things too far and nearly destroyed themselves. Sometime after Stone Cold Steve Austin cut his famous Austin 316 promo, he injured Brian Pillman and put him out of action. On the November 4th, 1996 episode of Raw, WWE was doing a live interview with Pillman from his home. Stone Cold heard about this and decided to make a visit. However, Brian Pillman was ready and revealed he had a loaded gun. When Austin broke in, Pillman pointed the firearm and then the live feed cut out. Mm -hmm. You can probably see why WWE got in so much trouble yeah. after this happened. While the incident did help improve WWE's ratings, that was the only positive thing that came from this moment. Viewers and advertisers were mad about the incident, of and course. USA Network, the network broadcasting Raw, almost canceled Raw because of it. This probably would have happened too had WWE gone with their original version. Initially, Brian Pillman's wife was supposed to be knocked over by Stone Cold, and Brian Pillman Whoa. was actually going to fire two gunshots at Austin. Whoa. Thankfully, WWE didn't do this, because if they had, it probably would have gotten Monday Night Raw kicked off the USA Network, which mm -hmm. would have killed WWE. And yeah, nah, bro. It was an infamous segment, but 
them investors were like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> At the Judgment Day pay-per-view in 2000, networks. Triple H fought The Rock in a 60-minute Iron Man match. The match went as planned, or so they thought. Ten years after the show, the game, the People's Champ, and WWE themselves would be sued by a teenage fan who attended the event. To see what happened and how the lawsuit ended, watch this video. Oh, damn. Hold on, man. We may have to check that out, bro, because I want to see... See what happened, bro. Whoa, 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 whoa. He sued Man who attended the event to see. Yeah, well, let's see what happened. It's a story being talked about around we the country. We got to see what happened, Two man. Two professional wrestling's biggest names are being sued by a Kentuckiana teenager. On May 21st, 2000, WWE was hosting the Judgment Day pay-per-view from the Freedom Hall Arena in Louisville, Kentucky. The main event was a 60-minute Iron Man match between Triple H and the WWE champion, The Rock. Shawn Michaels was a special guest referee, but even I don't think I know about this official, story. The match still or maybe chaos. I don't remember. At one point, the game and the Brahma Bull began brawling in the crowd. While it isn't super common during WWE matches, fighting amongst the fans isn't out of the ordinary either. However, this time, it looked a bit more chaotic than usual, as viewers watching on TV could barely see what was going on. Triple H and The Rock eventually returned to the ring, and everything seemed fine. Little did they know that over 10 years later, this incident would come back to haunt them. 10 years later? A Southern Indiana teenager is suing World Wrestling Entertainment and two of its biggest stars, claiming he was seriously injured at an event when he was just seven years old. In January 2011, WWE, Triple H, and The Rock were all hit with a lawsuit by a fan who attended Judgment Day back in 2000. The fan was named Ronald Basham, who at the time the lawsuit was filed was 18 years old, but was only 7 when he attended the show. According to the lawsuit, a woman who was also attending the event had gotten shoved when The Rock and Triple H were fighting in the crowd. This woman landed on top of Basham, hurting his right knee. The injury was Damn. so severe that the family called an ambulance. According to Ronald Basham, he tried but couldn't really compete in sports after the incident and it oh, led damn. to numerous medical expenses. Basham's family hoped his knee would heal on its own, but according to them, it never did. Because of that, and WWE's refusal to pay for anything, Basham decided to file a lawsuit almost 11 years after the incident. Do you think, you know, suing the WWE is the right thing to do? Yeah, for the pain and taking away a kid's childhood. That's the best part of anyone's life, I think, is a childhood. I don't think it should have happened. Hmm. Shortly after news of the lawsuit broke, more information would be shared and showed a different side to the teenager's story. The entertainment news site, TMZ, revealed that Ronald Basham had been driving stock cars as recently as 2010. Oh. TMZ shared several photos that had been posted to Facebook, but disappeared shortly after the lawsuit was filed. Additionally, TMZ claimed that Ronald Basham had also played football in high school. Oh. When asked if Basham's injury came from driving stock cars, his attorney said there was no proof of that. Regardless, this lawsuit got a lot of attention when it was made public in January 2011, but things quickly went dark. For the next few years, Triple H, The Rock, and WWE would fight a legal battle with this teenager from Louisville, Kentucky. Finally, after nearly four years, the lawsuit would come to an end. In November 2014, Ronald Basham agreed to dismiss the case, and WWE, Triple H, and The Rock were released from all claims and liability. Damn. The agreement also stated that this case could never be reopened, and all parties had to bear their own legal expenses. Mm. It might seem like Ronald Basham got a pretty bad deal, but that's probably not true. It's almost a guarantee that WWE and or Triple H and The Rock gave the teenager some money in order to get him to agree to dismiss the case. Mm -hmm. Of course, the exact amount isn't known, yeah. but it could be anywhere from $5,000 to $5 million. There was another teenager who found himself in That's crazy, bro. That That's that's insane, man. Like, it, I don't know, it comes off a little bit kind of questionable. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you wait 10 years to file a lawsuit? I don't know about that. You know what I'm saying? that That's what kind of makes it a little bit questionable but yeah we had to check that that extra clip out because i wanted to know you know the you know the verdict of the whole situation i didn't even know this this had happened man but yeah this was this was a uh it was this was a great video shout, shout out to tap out corner once again for providing the great Since content WWE has per usual he stays with the dope videos and formative videos man so comment down below let me know what's your most controversial i guess you could say promo promo or segment you can remember in wwe like the most controversial one the one i can think off the top of my head is the whole triple h um and i think he was having a 
feud with Kane. And then Kane accidentally killed someone. And then it was uh, him dressing up as Kane with the mask or some shit. And doing something with the person in the casket. I, 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 that, that, I think it's the Katie Vick situation. I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm wrong. That was just a little bit like, all right, bro. Well, this... Where are we taking this? This is um, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> That's the one I can think off the top of my head. But appreciate all love and support. Roll to 100K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.